As we continue our palpation tutorial, I'm going to focus on what's called the axial skeleton. Basically, that is the spinal column. So just like us, dogs have a cervical spine, a thoracic spine, a lumbar spine, a fused sacrum, and then coccygeal vertebrae, which make up their tail. So let's delve into that in a little bit more detail. When it comes to the cervical spine, all mammals have seven cervical vertebrae, which I think is just fascinating. There's so much musculature in this area that it's really hard to feel the bones, the actual vertebrae in the neck area. But if you go just at the base of the skull, behind the ears, you'll feel a lump on each side. That is actually the second cervical vertebrae, which is a nice landmark. You'll be stunned at how big it is on your dog. So again, my thumb and finger are on those points for Libby. And I'm feeling I'm going over the knob there. And that is her second vertebrae or axis. The atlas actually holds up the world and it's, or her skull. And that's actually tucked up under her, her skull there. And again, the first one we can feel on the inside and outside is the axis or second. Then we go down to three, four, five, six, seven, at which point we have the thoracic spine. Now, what differentiates the thoracic spine? That's where all the ribs attach. There are 13 thoracic vertebrae and thus 13 pairs of ribs. Occasionally, there'll be an anomaly that will be revealed on x-ray, but it typically doesn't cause problems if there's a very number of vertebrae and or ribs. So if you go to the midline, you'll feel a bump, a series of bumps actually, as you work your way down the spine. That's the spinous process of each individual vertebrae in her thoracic spine. So unlike the cervical area, there's not as much overlying tissue here, so we can actually feel that bump sticking up. A typical vertebrae has a vertebral body, which is deep, lateral or transverse processes, which are on each side, as I pointed out with C2 here, and then a dorsal spinal process that sticks out. You can feel the same thing on your own spine. Next, we're gonna move to the lumbar area. Now, it's really important to know where the junction is between the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine because this is a point of stress. So how do I find that? Well, remember we said that the ribs connect to the thoracic spine. So if I trace Libby's ribs, and I can feel the series of ribs here laterally, up, 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 it kind of circles around like so, and it's actually way up here is where the junction of her thoracic spine and her lumbar spine is. So why is that a point of stress? Well, it's because the rib cage, the word cage, basically means that this is relatively immobile, whereas the lumbar area doesn't have anything holding it in place. So it is relatively more mobile. So when you have immobile juxt meeting more mobile, again, high translatory area. There are seven lumbar vertebrae. People have five. So again, humans and dogs have seven cervical vertebrae. Dogs have 13 thoracic vertebrae. We actually have 12. Dogs have seven lumbar vertebrae. We have five. Then we can go to the junction of the sacrum, which is a fused triangular bone in this area. Again, we have a point of high stress. We remember the lumbar spine moves, the sacrum is fused together. People have five sacral bones to make up that sacrum, whereas dogs only have three. Then finally, to finish up, the axial skeleton is the coccyx or tail. 
Now, we actually have a little bitty bitty tailbone way up high in our pelvis with just a few little vertebrae in. So that's what we call a vestigial bone. The dog's tail, however, is highly functional. And again, with all the various breeds, sometimes they have a short little stubby tail, sometimes they have an inverted tail, sometimes they have a whip tail, sometimes they have a big fluffy tail like Libby's. Now, it is very common to have a variable number of vertebrae when it comes to the tail or coccyx. Typically, it's somewhere between 15 and 23. I think 17 to 21 is probably the average. But the tail should be very mobile, be able to move um, on either side. You should be able to lift it without causing any distress. If it does, that could be uh, a sign that something is wrong. And the carriage should be light and uh, neutral. Again, equal movement to either side. So get used to feeling that tail too. And if your dog is relatively thin, you can find the individual vertebrae as they taper down to the very tip. So Libby's tail actually ends here and then the rest is just her fluff.